Hey everybody, it's Jochen Heiden and I'm back with the Desert Wolf vs. Weird Way Ace Warner Pacific Campaign. This is Scenario 1 with Stacking Limits and we are now in the 17th of November, 1942. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's do this dang thing. We're back here on November 17th, 1942. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to watch a turn. Got my gin drink here. Had a nice day plane spotting in uh, at Cable Airport in Upland, California. And I'm ready to watch some turns. Let's get on with it. Let's see what we got here. Okay, no night activity so far that we can see. Hmm. What? Am I watching the right campaign? <laughs> what? Why? Seems kind of late in the game to be doing this. So this is where we, he's landing at Sarong. And the war has moved way past this. But for whatever reason, he's feeling the need to capture these bases now. I, I don't know why. Maybe he doesn't want Desiree well pulling some back under uh, covert operations out of these bases. But it'd be hard to get anything to them to support that. Okay, Coast Watchers. Oh, what is this? Oh, ambush time. Oh, this is not good. Oh, remember that AM, that mine layer that was at Coco's Island? Well, it looks like the... Uh, uh, the Japanese here, Weirway, was not having any more of this, so he sent a bunch of torpedo boats over the Cocos Islands to deal with this. I think it's safe to say that the uh, mine layer of Virio is done for. I love this uh, small unit action here. Yeah, what do, what do you mean you ordered them to disengage? You're not getting out of here. You're done. How many hits does this thing actually need to sink? Man, there's got to be like nobody left alive on that ship now. That's it. <laughs> All hands abandoned the ship only. There was nobody on the PA to make that call because he was dead too. Uh, wow, I didn't see that coming. Okay. Alright, so let's get into the air operations and see if these crazy liberators go hit somewhere else today. Oh, oh! We'll check this out. It looks like the uh, the Japanese have some ASW assets available too. Uh oh, it's not good. Possible hit on another Japanese sub. Okay, we've got the daily sweeps over land chow because you know bombers are coming in after that. So we got some lilies coming in from Hankow, hitting these troops up here. I, I don't know, like, why these guys, but, alright. Uh, severe storms, bad weather in the hex, no good. Oh, my favorite, the Sonyas, hit Lanchow. 
A lot of hits, but I doubt much damage will come of that. Okay, we have Lilies hitting here now. What, why? I don't get this. Why would you hit these back backfield units like this? What's the point? They're not even in contention right now. Hit the stuff that you're trying to break through at, right? I don't get where away, man. I don't get them. Okay, Sonya's hitting Lancia again. Some more raids coming in for Tongi. I doubt they find much of anything left there. Oh, okay. There's still a couple aircraft destroyed on the ground here. Or damaged. Now it's destroyed. There's got to be very little left. B-17s. I can't believe it. There's still more aircraft on the ground at Tongi. This, like, this is like the... This whole operation for Weirway, our Japanese player... Is just haunting him for days after it's already over. He's still losing aircraft here. Dang. Dang. Look at the size of this raid. Give me a break, man. Come on, man. Ugh. Golly. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. This is just unstoppable. More aircraft destroyed on the ground. This is just a disaster. Naru is turning into a, a complete disaster for Weirwei, just like Tungi did. I have never seen somebody lose so many aircraft on the ground as I have in this campaign. And it's going to be more, you can bet. How do you even defend against this? You don't. You just don't. Just quit. How is this even fun? I almost hate watching it. More aircraft destroyed. Eh, hey, let's send some more too. Maybe there's no aircraft left. They're all cinder. Okay, sweeps coming in late to Tungi. Sweeps Tungi. Okay, that's your AM phase. Let's uh, continue on to the PM phase and see what happens. It does not appear that the Japanese ASW pilots are as good as the Allied ones. Man. Dang. Yeah, see, we're not seeing any uh, any hits on the Allied subs, but the, the Japanese ones are definitely taking hits. Okay, another sweep of Lanchow. Another sweep of Tungi. And another one. Looks like it's supposed to recon here. Okay, PM face wasn't too eventful.
Let's move into land combat now and see if Werewei wants to actually do something today. I swear if he bombards at Lanchow again, I'm gonna... <laughs> Another bombardment. Ugh. This guy's killing me, man. This is accomplishing exactly squat. And now I store this number one up a lot. I think that unit got in that was north of Lanchow. So now he's got more AV here. Attack already. Oh, let's bombard here too because that's really helping out. This is nothing. And what are we hoping to accomplish with this? Nothing. I hate bombardments. Useless. Oh. Okay, so this is... Okay, I, this makes more sense. He's trying to see what he's got here. So, Werewei is poking and prodding to see what exactly he's dealing with. And I'm sure it's it's not... It's, it's uh... Definitely not a good sight to see allied or American... Infantry divisions on the map. These guys are stacked. Lots of guns. Lots of uh, firepower. And you can kind of see that here. Um, this wasn't... It was a fair... It was a trade, but... You don't like to lose guns, right? Okay. So basically just bombardments this turn for the Japanese. Um, well, that's good. That's good, too. Abamama going to size airfield 4 is going to make it even harder for where away now. Because every time he goes up an airfield size, it's more aircraft you can put there. Bigger aircraft you can put there that can carry their full load and all that. And once he gets to a size 5 airfield there, he has no basically no restrictions on the aircraft that he can operate out of that. Let's see if we get any uh, uh, reinforcements here. Okay, a sub chaser at Balboa. Uh, some sort of unit at San Francisco. My guess is that's like a, a unit that was bought out. That was destroyed and spawning back in. We'll take a look at it though. Okay. Let's uh let's see what happened here. We'll start with aircraft losses this turn. Another bad day for the Japanese. Um almost entirely lost in the no. It was everything lost in the ground here. And you can take a look here. Nick's, Oscars, uh, Dina's, Zero's, Tojo's, all destroyed on the ground. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> That's all I can say. Since no Allied aircraft were lost at all this turn, which is crazy to me with all the amount of sorties that they flew, uh, there's no pilot losses. The Army lost points this last turn. The Allies lost three. The Japanese won. Looking at ships sunk this last turn, the Vireo was lost at Cocos Islands be, be due to those torpedo boats coming in. Didn't see that happening or coming, but that was pretty cool. Uh, okay, for the turn, the Allies gained an additional 14 points, bringing the Japanese win ratio down to 1.591. And something else I'm going to start uh, covering here in this uh, end of this intelligence screen here is the amount of political points gain or loss per turn. Just so you guys can see if uh, Desert Wolf is spending a lot of political points. Because if he is, that means we need to go look around on the map and see what he's spending that on. Because that means there's a unit getting bought out, a base getting swapped around, something's getting spent. So for this turn, he gained his 50 points, didn't... Uh, from last turn, he didn't spend any points. We gained it. He's up to 166. And I'll watch this number every turn and I'll let you know what the gain or loss is on it. Okay. So, I looked at the combat report. And there's nothing really to report. It's all normal stuff. No desync. No actions that we didn't see on the map. I also reviewed the second report. 
Uh, you guys are welcome to pause the video and look at it yourself, but I went through it and didn't see anything super important that was worth reporting on at this time. Uh, on the ops report, it was also pretty quiet. Uh, a couple things that stood out to me was this Abamama Airfield Size 4. And that, of course, is in the Gilbert Islands. And this is one of his large bases, right? So getting this base up to a size 5 allows him to, to fly his 4-inch bombers with a full bomb load at extended range with no... Uh, with no penalties now he's a little bit overstacked here and it's gonna start eating into supply consumption and, and all that stuff a little bit more but he may be willing to just deal with it just for the convenience of leaving the troops there because it's not really worth moving him off he's not having supply issues and this base is not going to get attacked so there's no real point in really even resolving this overstacking situation but yeah once it's up to size five this would be a very uh fully Operational base where four engine bombers can operate out of unrestricted. And then the last thing on the ops support, I mentioned it during the replay, was this unit was just what I thought over here in San Francisco. It looks like he bought this unit back. It had LB 30s, which of which there are no more. And he won't be able to even upgrade these until February of 1942 because they're playing with a, a player defined upgrades off. So he can't even upgrade this unit to the D1s until 43. But that's fine. It'll just sit here and he can have it trained if he wants. And they'll train. It, they will train. It'll just be extremely slow because they have no aircraft. So it's assumed like they're doing ground school or having talks or, or classroom discussion things. But there's no aircraft for them to fly. So the training levels can be very, very low. Okay. Let's go ahead and just go ahead into the, into the turn here. China was pretty quiet. We had some bombardments. Again, I keep beating, beating this dead horse, and I'm going to stop because no one's listening. But Wei Wei needs to get off his butt and do something in Lan Chao. He has the troops to really be effective here. And every day that goes by, more troops are getting in here. These guys are recovering. The supply situation isn't changing, but it's not getting worse until he attacks. So... The base is still damaged, but it doesn't look like Des Wolf is trying to repair it anyway. He needs to attack. Nothing happened down here, really. In Burma, very little activity, although we did have some bombardments. So, uh, we're always poking and prodding around here just to kind of see what the Allies have. Now he knows, right? And now he knows that Tungu... You better be careful because these allied infantry divisions are no joke. These guys pack a lot of firepower. And we also saw Tung Tungi was again bombed by the allies. The airfield is fully destroyed now. And there are still some dead damaged aircraft on the field here that are getting destroyed. But there's probably very few left. I was mousing around before that I started recording this, looking for where his aircraft might be, and I'm not seeing it. I have no idea where he's moved his aircraft to. We do see some stuff here at Tavoy, but the detection level is getting pretty low, so we don't know how accurate that is now. I didn't think we'd have to talk about this again for a while, but something interesting here. We're away is landing and taking Sarong. And I'm really scratching my head here trying to figure out why he's doing this now. I mean, he left these bases months ago, right? The time to be active in the Dutch East Indies for the Japanese was January, February, March, April, not late November. So I don't know what the point is of him coming in here and taking this bases unless he's just looking to grab a couple extra points because he's losing his shorts or he wants to deny these bases to the allies that come in and maybe sneak an AS and a sub base you, you know what I mean you you could theoretically get something into these things and, and do something with them but I I would think that's unlikely given how far behind the lines they are but hey we're always out here doing something so I just want to show it to you okay uh, I've been I've been looking at Australia for a while here, and quite honestly, I'm not seeing much going on to even talk about. But since we're over here, we can talk about this. 
So the last this turn, we had Japanese torpedo boats coming in from I'm assuming one of these bases in in on Java, right? And destroy that mine layer that was sitting here at Cocos Islands. So they're gone as far as we can tell, but we do have another uh, allied sub uh, transport mission and they're just sitting off the coast here. They appear to be a little uh, apprehensive to go back in here. Maybe he called them off waiting for that torpedo boat situation to resolve itself. But I don't know why these guys are still sitting here. My understanding was they're going to go into Cocos Islands this turn and drop off supplies, but maybe something's changed with the arrival of those torpedo boats. I don't know. We'll watch this. Uh, some some weird stuff going on over here. I I'm, I'm curious as to what what the game plan is for this. All right. So, uh, back to the Gilberts and the Marshalls. It does appear that Weirway has gotten a message that it is not safe to operate subs down here. This is the last one that's been spotted. It's been getting attacked the last couple days, but it does appear to be moving up towards uh, Millie, like the rest of his subs. Naru got hit heavily, again, by a lot of bombers this turn. And, of course, there were tons of aircraft on the ground. Most of the aircraft losses this turn came from Naru. So this base is now trash. It's not really inhabitable for much longer, I don't see, I don't think. The airfield damage is high. The aircraft have been eradicated. So now you can bet that these Allied bombers are going to start targeting the troops and the other assorted stuff associated with Nauru. So uh, this is quickly becoming an untenable spot for the Japanese. And once this is reduced, you can bet all these bombers that are down here and here are going to start heading towards Millie. Uh, and again, I have no indication as to where um, Desert Wolf is going to go next. I don't see anything that's pointing one way or the other. He's definitely focusing down Naru right now, but Naru had a lot of aircraft there and he wanted to neutralize that. But that doesn't tell me if he's actually trying to go towards Naru or not. So your guess is as good as mine. To me, it's almost 50-50 at this point which direction he wants to go. So there's, there's a positive and negative for each base. Okay, let's talk about Naru. Positive. This is a big base that needs to be neutralized. It has a lot of resources that the Japanese can use. Uh, it's got a big airfield. It It's just a thorn in the side of the Allies as they advance north. So it makes sense to neutralize this. And it's so far away from other bases, it's it doesn't get the same kind of mutual uh, support that the Islands and the Marshals will get, right? Now here's the downside. It's very far away from where the Allies are at right now. Ocean Island is not really well suited to launch an attack from it's just not built up enough right so any task force that has to sail is going to have to sail from gilbert's and it's going to take them a couple days to get there in which in which case they'll be sighted it there's less surprise available to that right and it's just a longer way to go and there's a lot more troops on naru than other bases so you'd have to come in very 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 heavy here to make sure you can overwhelm them and get onto the base in time. Now, I don't believe this is actually classified as an atoll, so it won't necessarily trigger a shock attack. So that is that's one good thing, right? You don't have to worry about coming in heavy and hitting hard on a first turn because when you amphibious assault a an atoll island, it triggers a shock attack, and that either goes really good or goes really bad for you. Uh, like earlier in the campaign, I heard about it. I believe it was here at Wake. Uh, Desert Wolf launched an attack here. A shock attack. He sent in one regiment, and apparently the Japanese had heavily reinforced this thing, and the entire Allied regiment was eradicated. It was completely destroyed. So you have to make sure you come in with overwhelming force when you do these things, or you're going to get your butt kicked. Um, that's not the case of Naru. They could land and I guess consolidate before attacking, but still, it's far away. Okay, let's talk about the positives of attacking Millie. The positive is it's close to Macon, and Macon is a base that you could launch that attack from. It's one turn you can get there. Uh, it does not have as large of a garrison. It can't because it just doesn't have the, the same stacking limit, right? Uh, downsides. It is a lot closer to Japanese strongholds, right? Uh, Woche, Maloy Lap Lap, oh, Maloy Lap, 
uh, Kwajalein, Roy Namur. All of these bases are kind of built up and have capabilities of launching counterattacks from up here. So you have a higher risk of getting intercepted or having interference by other Japanese units when you go in here. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, and it's also an atoll, so you have to make sure you come in heavy. Because you're going to shock attack when you land here. And if if the intel's bad here and these guys have more troops than what it seems, you could have a same you could have a Wake Island situation again. So those are the pluses and minuses of both bases. Let me know in the comments what you think about either or and what you think Desert Wolf is going to do. He hasn't told me and I haven't asked. I don't want to know. I just want to read these tea leaves like you guys and try to figure it out myself. Okay, uh, I want to do a little housekeeping here before I end this turn. I want to show you what I found up here in the Aleutians. It does appear that Desert Wolf has loaded up all these offensive units here. This is a lot of firepower. Golly. He's packed up all these troops on these ships. And he is sailing them to Pearl Harbor. Where he's going to go next after that, I don't know. I have noticed with Desert Wolf, he tends to not name his task forces too, too often. So he doesn't give me a lot of details. But he's relocating a lot of this firepower back down to Pearl. So... We'll watch this and see where he goes with it and see if we can figure out what he's going to do with that. Okay, the next thing I noticed when I was looking around the map, and this is kind of way out, out left field, but I found this task force here. Uh, this is an amphibious task force loaded with infantry regiments, coastal artillery, um, aviation support, a, a bunch of good units here. Uh, about 3,000 troops and a lot of equipment. These guys are sailing to Pago Pago. Uh, I, I don't know why. There's quite a bit of troops already on Pago Pago, but he's sending more. I don't know if it's just, just a stopover to refuel or what, but uh, let's keep an eye on this task force and see where they head to after they get here. I'm guessing this is a fuel stop, and they'll continue on, presumably up to the Gilberts, but who knows? Maybe this is going to go... This way. So let's watch this in the coming turns to see what he intends to do with all these troops. And then the last thing I noticed was over here in the Ellis Islands. This task force here, which has been sailing for a while, I never noticed it, uh, is loaded with a lot of Royal Australian Air Force base forces and support units. And they're going to Aurora. And I'm guessing they're going in there to just uh, beef up this base get more troops on here to increase the amount of aircraft that can be operated or or something else i don't know but these are support units and they're heading here and i know this is where this wolf is operating the bulk of his four engine bombers right now the last thing i noticed was this do you remember these two ships the smith and the Cassin? these are the two ships that were damaged in combat near naru about a week ago uh, they are now heading down to uh suva in Fiji and the only thing I can guess is that they're going to get some assistance from this repair ship here the Prometheus so he's moving him down to here for maybe some sort of temporary repairs I guess I don't really know why though because the repair ship could fully repair this one but they could not fully repair this one it can only do um, damage up to five major damage it can repair anything over five it can't repair it so i don't really know why he's sending these guys down to suva it to me it would make more sense to send them down to auckland sydney uh brisbane or just back to pearl for permanent repair at least one of these the one that has like this one is fine to go to suva this one can't be fully repaired there so it's going to have to continue on to a shipyard to get that patched up but I found it, and I wanted to point it out to you. All right, that's it for me. I think I've covered all the important stuff for this turn. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, I'm still really interested to see where he's going to go uh, here. Is it going to be Naru? Is it going to be Millie? Again, I'd like to hear your thoughts. And then we'll keep track of these, these task forces moving around. And then hopefully in the next turn will be exciting as well, and we'll get to talk about that. So until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one.